pray. We're going to pray into what just happened, the reconciliation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. First, we exalt you. We celebrate you. We praise you, God. We will not sit on this miracle, Woo! Lord, of people coming home. How many years had it been? But God, you knew that her prayers would break through and cause a reconciliation how many people are outside the will of god we've been praying for how many people have we seen we might not even know them and we know they're in the grip of darkness and we're praying and we're hoping and believing god and we're waiting and we get weary and it's been years it's been hard it's been testing but god you gave us a prophetic sign this week after an earthquake where you said that things were being awakened that we would see a resurrection of your power, God. That we would see a new thing happen in the earth. That you were breaking things free. Waking things up. Waking people up. Opening eyes. People who are in the grave. And asleep. We declared on last week that they were coming out of the grave. Why? To do the work of the kingdom of God. And I speak over that young man's life, God. That whatever the calling is on them will come to pass, Lord, in Jesus' name. Guys, just clap your hands. Glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Glorify the Lord. We praise you, God. We thank you, God. Listen, y'all didn't know what my message was going to be. But, um, yes, it's connected to the earthquake. You can have a seat if you want. Listen, um, a couple of prophetic signs. So as she was sharing about this reconciliation... The Lord started talking to me, and he started talking to me about mushrooms. And Chance has been talking about mushrooms. And I was like, God, I was like, Lord, what is it about mushrooms? Because I don't know if y'all have noticed lately, they've been popping up everywhere. Yeah. And I'm like, Chastity, what is the Lord? And she's like, I don't know. What is, and so Chast, <laughs> the Lord just told me what it's about. Mushrooms come up from dead things. They're a fungus. Yeah. And they grow out of dead things. And so when we see things that are dead... Sometimes we walk past that and say, okay, it's over, but that's not God. Oh, yeah. Listen, there are yeah. mushrooms all over the place. They're right here. They're back. Literally, God is showing how he redeems dead things. Yeah. But watch this. I'm not done. Say he's not done. He's not done. Look up there. You, you might not be able to see it. God, you are so good. I've never seen this before. My kids are going to freak out. There is a cicada coming out of its, you know how it, it goes from being a, what is it, a nymph? A nymph, and then it becomes a cicada where it has wings. The thing is coming out right here. It's, it, it's green because, you know, it's got to dry off and stuff before it can actually fly. I've never seen it. So you're like, okay, what's the point? Prophetically, what's happening? There's a shift happening in that cicada's life. Something that it could not carry into the future, something dead, something that would weigh it down from going where it needed to go in its identity. The season is shifting for this yeah. cicada. Yeah. So just like we talked about the shift, where you've seen something that looked dead, it's back to life. And now it's going to grow. It's going to develop. It's the same thing the Lord is speaking about the shift. He quaked. He shook. He awakened something last week. We've got to walk in this. And my message today is about that. It's about shaking off things that, that, that quench the light of Christ in our lives, going against dark things in this earth that are trying to weigh us down and keep us bound. The word today is about freedom, and the title of the word is Turn on the Light. Say, Turn on the Light. Turn We're going to turn on, say, I'm going to turn on the light. So let's talk about that real quick. Uh, 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 if you think about uh, American traffic laws, you got a speed limit. You go down Wendover in Greensboro, the speed limit is 45 miles an hour. Now, what does the word limit mean to you? It means that's it. Don't go higher. Don't. It, that's it. That's the limit. Do we drive that way? No. <laughs> so let's think spiritually. We, we know the ways of God. This is what he says, do, but do we live that way? And so what happens is we get cultural. We start saying, well, everyone else is driving. You know, I'll never forget growing up, I used to hear, go with the flow of traffic. That's not anywhere in the North Carolina laws of traffic. <laughs> It's not there. Go with the flow of traffic. That's what we do. We do what we see other people do. But the good thing is the, the authorities, they know this about us. And so they give us reminders as you're driving down Wendover. Every so often you're going to see a speed limit sign to remind you, here's the deal. And the hope is that the authorities.
insecurities will get you to wake up and say, you know what? It's a, it's the limit. I need to do this and then I won't even have to worry about being in trouble with the authorities. I'm going to abide within the confines of the kingdom of North Carolina traffic laws. It's, it's a system. And the system set up for everyone to be safe, get where they need to go. But what we do is we, we, we leave late. I could talk, I'll just talk about me. We leave late, so then we start, we start rationalizing why the speed limit doesn't apply to us. We start looking for reasons why the speed limit, oh, you know, I'll just go five over. I'll just go ten over. Well, they won't pop you if you don't go 15 over. So now I'm saying I'm testing the authorities. I'm saying if you're not merciful to me, how dare you? Wait a minute, officer. I was just going seven over. Have you ever had this? You get a, you get pulled over and you're begging for mercy. Well, officer, I, I, the last time I looked at my speedometer, I was just going seven over. But that's against the law. Right. Come on. Right. And so culturally, we are we have literally been engaging in compromise because that's just what we do. Why am I talking about this? In the spirit, we can't afford it. We cannot afford it. All right, let's talk about systems in general. There are two kingdoms, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. They each have rules. Jesus even would say, how can a system stay? How can a kingdom stand if it's divided? So there's ways of each one of these. Now, we as people of God, if you haven't come to know Christ Jesus, we'll, we'll give you an opportunity to do that later. And after this uh, message, I pray and believe that you won't want to have nothing to do with the kingdom of darkness after what we're going to learn. So, so long story short, there are rules to both. Now, the kingdom of light is all about expanding, just like the kingdom of darkness is all about expanding. But the, but the citizens of each one of those systems have the ability to make a decision. To make a decision. So, like on the traffic law thing, I can decide, you know what? And I made this decision. Chastity will, will attest to this. Recently, the Lord convicted me about speeding. He said, Frank, it's speed limit. Don't go by it. So there are days, like I came here today, I, I put cruise control on. I'm on uh, 220 and whatever it was, 60, 60 miles an hour, I think it is. Put it on. I'm cruising. And you know what I've, what I've noticed is when I do that, I feel closer to God. I feel more peace, that anxiety, that heart rate that goes up because you're feeling late. Sometimes I'm like, I'm just going to be late. But I'm going to please God. You know, let the other person, you know, I'll apologize and make up with them. But I'm going to please God. I hope you hear where I'm going with this. I hope you hear where I'm going with this. So he's about to apply this to the word. Let me just establish something real quick. Darkness has to be exposed. So the sign on the highway or Wendover exposes there's, there's a this or that. You can abide by this or not. So, so the law, the Bible says that the law kills, the letter kills. So when the Ten Commandments came and all the rules and all the stuff, the ways of God, he, he's exposing our sin. It doesn't save us. Jesus did that. All right? But the, the darkness, the sin, the, the stuff that the enemy wants to bring to the earth has to be exposed. So watch this. There are levels to your relationship with God. Now, you can have a relationship with God where it's like, I'm saved. So I'm just going to go about my day. Now, you probably already know enough about me if you come before that. That's not where I, I hope you are going. You know, I think God's calling us to, to a, a life that is vibrant and vivid and is relating to him at all times. We're always relating to him. So we don't want to be in that position where I'm just like, oh, okay, I'm already saved. We want to grow so we can make an impact in the earth. We've been talking about lately about how we are called to introduce the father to people to change atmospheres, to bring healing, to bring his word into places. You know, Jake, I received that word about going to places and yes, yes, absolutely. That is what we're all called to in our own way. But God wants to expose that. This is what it says about the Lord. Job 12, 22. You don't have to go there. I'm going to read a bunch of these. He said, it says he reveals the deep things of darkness and brings utter darkness into the light. Daniel 2, 22. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness, and light dwells with him. 1 Corinthians 2.10 But it was to us that God revealed these things by his Spirit, for his Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. 
And he just goes on and on. Mark 4, 22, for everything that is hidden will eventually be brought into the open and every secret will be brought to light. Why are we talking about this? Because first, looking at individually, you need to know it's possible for you to have blind spots. That you need to keep yourself in connection with God so he can expose how the enemy is coming against you. And he starts right here. So when I'm driving on Windover and I'm thinking, go with the flow of traffic, I'm operating in error. And I need that error to be exposed so I won't be in danger of being pulled over by the authorities. Because eventually the authority is coming. Their mercy, their circumstances has a, has a time limit. Eventually, you will, you will see consequences. And what we want is the blessings. We don't want to have consequences. Mm -hmm. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Look, it's going to get good real quick. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm going to share a dream that I had. So I'm in my mom's house in this dream, and I look toward the window of the house, and it's covered in vines. And there's like lizards on it, chameleons, and all these creeping things. I'm like, man, that's crazy. And, and, and so then I realize I... Personally, I'm, I'm bound by vines around my body. And then I do this right here because I'm like, maybe I feel something on my back. And it was, it was like uh, chameleons and lizards. And there was an octopus on my back. Octopus, you know, they got the suction cups. This thing was stuck. And so I, listen to this, I made the decision that I didn't want to be bound anymore. Amen. Speak Holy Ghost right Amen. now. I made the decision... I'm not going to be bound anymore. So I reached back, I pulled, and yes, there was resistance. Because it was sucking on me. And I had to, uh, 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 and I threw the thing down on the ground. Then I got these lizards, and then I said, like Hulk, you know when uh, 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 Bruce Banner turns into Hulk, and he's got, you know, his normal Lee's je Lee jeans on or whatever he's got, and then he starts doing his thing, and he gets angry. He's like, you won't like me when I'm angry. And his eyes turn green, and he, start, and he breaks out of those clothes. That's how I felt when I broke out of those vines. I'm like, ah, and this is all in the dream. And I woke up, and the Lord started speaking to me about the kingdom of darkness. And he started, he says, Frank, first, I'm not going to get to that yet. So first he said about the decision. All of us have been empowered by the Spirit of God to make a decision, and it actually breaks something. So what happens is the enemy tries to trick you into thinking it's hard. But the power in the name of Jesus, it says his name is above every other name. Every uh, When you use the name of Jesus, I'm done with this, Lord. I take my authority in Christ, and I say no more addiction. No more anger, no more depression, no more pornography. Whatever it is, God says he's exposing it for you to get out of it. Oh, God. Speak Holy Spirit. So then he says, Frank, go to the word. I went to Leviticus. He starts talking to me about, <laughs> Jake made a joke recently about, you know, Leviticus. Woo, we love reading that. But man, I'll never read Leviticus again the same. I will never read it the same again because God started saying, Remember, remember, he reveals the deep things of God. Speak 1 Corinthians 2, 2, 10. God is a God of mystery. But what happens is if you seek him, he will open up his, yeah. his will and his ways. Leviticus, just like the temple and the tabernacle are an indication of how um, the presence of God operates, that there's levels of closeness, that, that there's uh, holiness required to come to him, how there needs to be an atonement for sin by the blood of the Lamb. All that's a, a system to show metaphorically how Jesus works, how God works, how we should relate to God. Same way with clean and unclean animals. Oh, speak spirit of God. When you go into Leviticus for the rest of your life, whenever you read it, I want you to think about this. A clean animal represents the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And the unclean animals represent the demonic forces. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Jesus, come on. I got to go to my notes so I don't mess this one up. <laughs> Look. Somebody turn to somebody and say, the devil's getting mad. Oh, he don't like this word. Because when you read Leviticus, you're like, oh, man, unclean animals. I skip this part. Don't skip it again. Go in there and read it and let the spirit reveal to you what he's saying about how the kingdom of darkness operates. Because you'll be able to discern better than ever how to attack what the spirit of darkness try to do to you and try to do to the world. He has called us in this season as a revived end time church. Why? Because he knows he needs us to start praying against these powers of principalities, spiritual weakness in high places. And, and, you know, he wants us to take on generals in the satanic 
demonic force. But we haven't been able to do it because the church ain't united. And we don't know this stuff. We're walking around with the atomic power that I preached to y'all last week. One million times the power of the Hiroshima bomb is trapped inside of a magnitude 10 earthquake. The Lord said the kingdom of God is in you. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. You have atomic power to take on. What did he say to Peter? He said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not stand against it. Yes. We haven't walked in that yet. Why? Because we have not gotten the revelation about the power of God in us and who we're fighting every day. Paul, he said, you wrestle not against flesh and blood. He didn't say you wrestle with flesh and blood 20% of the time. And most of the times he says, you do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Listen, if you've got, if you've been diagnosed with ADD, if you're on Ritalin, it, speak to the Lord about how to Amen. take that thing to him. Amen. I'm telling you guys, he created us to, uh, to attack and usurp the kingdom of darkness. But when we're bound and we don't know we're bound, that's when the devil's winning. We have no idea. Jesus said he is the true vine. What does that mean? That means there's a false vine. Mm -hmm. wow. He says, if wow. you connect to me, you'll be fruitful. Right. So we need to be connected to him. He says, without me, you can do nothing. nothing. So when we go to the doctor first, we've already got it wrong. Mm. I got migraine headaches, blah, blah, blah. Go to the Lord first. Right. Lord, look, I'm not one of them people that says doctors have been anointed. I know they have. God has given wisdom and insight and creativity. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. Don't hear me say that, please. What I'm saying is, know you have authority right. to get these, these demonic vines off of you. In that dream, the Lord was giving, just giving me a vision of how things operate in the spirit realm. That there are, there are cicadas walking around like nymphs. Only thing you can do is creep along a tree. But you have the power to break out Amen. of that skin, that weight that is keeping you from being what you were born to be. Look, there are vines over Greensboro. So, so, so let's take this thing to 30,000 feet. There are vines over the White House. Come on, somebody. Don't say you don't know this when you watch the news. There are vines over the media. There are demonic spirits influencing every system in this earth. Yes. And it is our job to know who we're up against, pray, and go after those systems to take them down, break out. Yes. Come on now. Her prayers did that. Come on, somebody. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. She said, it was almost like losing my daughter again. Then she said, but I prayed. Oh, wait. Do you understand the power in your prayer? You're literally getting your voice to a God in heaven who's alive. And he does not despise your prayers. Amen. The Bible says he heard my cry and delivered me out of all of my troubles. Come on, somebody. Look, does it matter if you're alive if the prayer comes true? You could go to the grave and not see a prayer come through. Do you need Abraham did not see us, but he took the promise. Jesus. He believed God and it was counted into him as righteousness. Do you understand that the promises of God don't necessarily mean you have to witness it. It means you engage in warfare so the kingdom of God comes to earth. He said, let your will be done in heaven as, on in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is giving us a key. It's his name. His name. I hope you're getting supercharged right now. And you're getting, I pray in Jesus' name. That you're getting so fed up with dark stuff in your environment. Yes. I, look, if it's someone on your job that's coming in and they're a tail bearer and they're making everybody at odds with one another and making the atmosphere, pray. Find that spirit of, of gossip in Jesus' name. Look, start asking the Lord, what is it going inside of their, their heart that I can pray against? Maybe it's the spirit of depression, spirit of rejection, maybe it, whatever it is, start praying and believing. Do you hear me? God. Bless the Lord. Bless. Now watch this. Watch this. Unclean animals. So in Leviticus, God said, don't eat this. Don't eat that. He says, uh, come on, let me read it. Oh, God, this is just getting me so excited. Oh, uh, okay. Listen to this. So 
First, let me just talk about how, in case you're wondering, the Bible does talk about how these creeping things hide. Listen to this, Proverbs 30, 28. 30, 28, Proverbs 30, 20, it says, a lizard, unclean animal, can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. Come on. So he's saying, yeah, you can catch it and get rid of it, but you're still going to find it in some of the highest places in the land. Yes. Do you see how God reveals his will if we pray? Sometimes you read these scriptures, that, I don't understand that. Well, ask him what it means. There is power in seeking the deep things of God. Listen to this, Proverbs 30, 15. The leech, you know, leeches, blood-sucking animals, unclean, demonic metaphor, has two daughters. <laughs> and the two daughters say, give, give, they cry. There are three things that are never satisfied, four that never say enough. What he's saying is these demonic forces, they want it all. They won't stop sucking life out of you. They will not stop sucking out your peace. So you, you just got to make a decision. Are you going to let it get worse or just take authority and say this leech, whatever it is, that's sucking my peace away. I'm going to bind that thing in Jesus' name. He said whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Yeah, yeah. You're just agreeing with what heaven's already doing, oh, yes. but you're taking the authority that God's waiting on you to use. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus walked up to the... Uh, to the uh, 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 come on, somebody, Bible scholars. What's his name? Ha! Ah, the man that had thousands of demons in him. He got to read him, demoni demoniac. He goes up to him, and the thing says, "Begs for mercy." <laughs> thousands of demons were in one vessel, yes. and they all begged for mercy when they saw Jesus. Do you understand what God is showing you in that? They they're afraid of you. <laughs> they're afraid of what's in you his name is jesus christ do not let your weapon sit on the shelf get in prayer attack the devil go at him watch this leviticus eleven twenty nine. 29 <laughs> i'm reading a new niv because that's probably the only thing that we can abide of the animals that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. The weasel. Now, we know if we call a person a weasel, what we mean. Don't we? No, could, look. Say yes, sir. Yeah, amen. Watch this. The rat. Same thing. You call someone a rat, you know what you're saying. Any kind of great lizard, the gecko, the monitor lizard, the wall lizard, these things are on walls. The skink, the chameleon. Demons like to change and shift and hide and try to make themselves look like, what did the Bible say about the, uh, the devil, that he wraps himself like a, he pretends to be an angel of light. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Your prayer life is on fire in Jesus' name. Yeah. This, is, this is the day you take up a mantle of prayer you've never had in yeah. Jesus' name. Watch this. It says, of all those that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. Watch this. It says, whoever even touches them, when they are even dead, will be unclean until evening. He's saying you should have such a disgust for the, the ways and the operations of the kingdom of darkness that you don't even want to touch it when it's dead. Yeah. He wants you to join in with what the line of the tribe of Judah is doing. He is roaring. He is attacking. He is on the move. And all we need to do is just take up our weapons and go with him. So let's talk about, there's so much. Let's talk about the vine. Deuteronomy 32, it says, their vine, meaning the demonic vine, comes from the vine of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are filled with poison. Their clusters with bitterness. Their wine is venom of serpents and deadly poison of cobras. The system of the demonic it only bears fruit that's poisonous. Jesus. It won't give you life. It won't. The Bible says, and I want you to get this, if there's nothing else you come away with today in your prayer life, know these three things. The words of Jesus are that the enemy comes not except for to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that you will have life and life to the full or more abundantly in some translations. The enemy system, the venom, the poison, the vine from Sodom and Gomorrah, it comes to steal, kill, and destroy you, 
your family, your job, your city, your state. Don't stand for it. We're done. We're drawing a line in the sand today. No more. No more. Hallelujah. Watch this. The victory we have in Jesus. Listen to this. Deuteronomy 32. <laughs> it says, how can one man chase a thousand or two people put 10,000 to flight unless their rock has sold them, unless the Lord has given them up? So let's just talk about this. So he's saying you've been released into this. He's saying he's already done the work. You don't have to be afraid. He's saying, how can you make a thousand demons fly? He's talking about demons. He's talking about warfare. And he says, two people together make 10,000 demons run. So now we're talking about the power of prayer together. Are you hearing where I'm going? We've got all kinds of power. Let's just talk math for a second. One puts a thousand and two puts 10,000. Keep adding one or two or four or seven. We got about 25 here. We could get Pleasant Garden on the move right now. I mean, if we started delineating what are the spiritual influences from the demonic realm that are influencing, and we just got together in unity and started. The Bible says the rock has given us to it. He's already said go. That rock, by the way, is in capital R in Deuteronomy. Yes, the Torah has a capital R for rock. The Old Testament is talking about Jesus as it always does. Watch this. But, but there's two rocks in this verse, Deuteronomy 32, 30, and 31. 31 says, for their rock is not like our rock, as even our enemies will concede. So the kingdom of darkness likes to counterfeit the kingdom of light. So they're, so they're saying there's two kings. You've got a king over the kingdom of darkness, the king over the kingdom of light. We know our king's Jesus, their king is Satan, you know, Jesus even told some people, said, your father is Satan. He told the Pharisees, you're not walking in the kingdom of light at all. Your father, he said, your father is Satan. Think about if somebody walked up to a, me or Jake and said that. I mean, wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's a bold thing to say in front of people. I mean, Jesus was so upset because he has no, he, ha he does not abide darkness. He looked Peter in the face and said, he rebuked him and said, get thee behind me, Satan. He's looking at Peter and calling Satan's name. He had no patience for darkness. None. He did not abide it. Jesus. To the point where he would get upset. He said to, to, Beth, uh, to Bethsaida, he said to Capernaum, he's like, I wanted to do so much, but now because you wouldn't receive me. This is after he had already healed all kinds of people in these towns. And he talked about how judgment was going to come against them. He was so angry and upset that here he is carrying the glory, the healing, the power, the anointing, the freedom of the spirit of God. And people did not get it. They needed to make a decision to go with the light and they couldn't get there. But our rock puts us into a position to chase demons. God, talk to me, because I'm almost done. I feel like there's more, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> this is so good. All right, so let's talk about another dream I had. I'm going to read this. I had this dream on August 9th, and I didn't even know the depth of it. And I'm going to read this verbatim of what I wrote in my notes. I was talking to a group of people. Say, that's me. That's me. I didn't know it was you at the time. Literally, I didn't know till last night. And I was telling them about how easy it is to break through glass walls. Let's talk about that for a minute. So if I had just said, I was talking to a group of people telling them how easy it is to break through walls, you probably would have thought brick. You might have thought, I don't know, uh, composite board, or uh, uh, you might have thought drywall or something. But the dream I had literally showed people breaking through glass the walls were not even real. <laughs> They're not. They're, they give way easily. I'm not done. Watch this. And then, this is in my notes. All you have to do is decide to run at it and put your head down. Oh, God. Prayer. Go. Look. 
Lord, Jesus. where are the walls the enemies erected around me that don't belong and, by the way, don't have any power? Show me. Okay, it's time to get it, Lord. Putting my head down in prayer and submission to the Lord, I'm going at this thing. The Bible says, thank you, Holy Spirit, that David, a boy, went at Goliath. He made an entire nation cower, and a little boy showed up and says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And he said, the Bible says he ran at Goliath. Imagine. A little boy coming up against a giant 10 feet tall. The little boy, by the way, has already told the king, I don't need your sword. <laughs> Somebody praise his name. He's going to go and give you the weapon you need. It's going to be easy. I love this story about David because the Bible says he went and got five smooth stones, the number of grace. Five is the number of grace. So he had undeserved favor. God will give you favor that you can't earn, can't deserve. It's only because he loves you and you put your faith in him to go at a giant in your life and take him out with one of the stones. He didn't even need them all. It's easy because our rock is not like their rock. I'm not done with the dream. I did warn them that they need to be careful not to do this and just get right back up and do it again strategy because without this is what i wrote down without the right preparation they can harm themselves so we got to be careful we got to be careful let's think let's talk militarily when you have opposing armies you've got generals you've got all kinds of different levels and and so you've got a theater of war which is where the battle is happening and you've got people strategizing on each side no one underneath leadership on either side needs to go forward without knowing what the marching orders are. So it's not a, it's not a situation where we could just show up like David and say, oh, yeah, the Lord's anointed me to take down this giant and you just run at him. You don't have your stone. You, you, you haven't connected with the Lord yet to get the strategy. And, and the thing that's so cool is it's easy. Like, it really is just about... Seeking him, letting him show you what to do, and just doing that. Say, I received that. I received that. The power to light up the world is within you right now. It is not meant to be concealed. It is not meant for you not to be bold. Matthew 5, 14 through 16, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp stand, Jesus Christ. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men so they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I love that word, let. So that's when it's saying we're being, <laughs> we're being encouraged to move out of the way. So let's talk about individually. In the dream, I was an individual. And I had vines. So individually, this is a good day. Like, don't let the devil come at you with depression and anxiety over this. This is a good word. This is the Lord exposing the darkness so that now we can attack the darkness. This is not one of those things where you're supposed to be on the drive home thinking, well, okay, I got at least three issues. No, 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 no. What you should be doing is celebrating that the Lord is saying, now is the That's season right. for you to drop all this weight. Right. And I praise the Lord for Jake coming and with the word and, and, and Carolyn coming with the word and talking about the weight because they didn't know that I had Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 in my sermon where it says, seeing that we are surrounded with, by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Cicada, he's still up there getting ready to fly because that season of being a nymph, undeveloped, underdeveloped, creeping, crawling, just making his way, just kind of biding his time, you know, I'm getting through it. You know, you ask people how they're doing, they're like, well, you know, one day at a time kind of stuff. That is not the joy of the Lord. The Lord wants you to be free and ready to fly. He wants you flying. He wants that dead weight gone. He, you know, molting, that's when it, it, um, uh, uh, the way the Lord created an animal Basically, that animal gets to a point where it's like, I cannot stay the same. I can't. It, 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 I, can't I literally cannot stay in this shell any longer. I could try, but it won't let. I, I just can't because I'm growing out of it. I'm getting to a point where I'm determined to, I, I'm just growing. 
And that's what's happening here. The Bible says, lay aside every weight and the sin that easily besets us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So I'm going to pray real quick. But let, me tell, let me tell you this. I woke up one morning and the Lord gave me the word satrap. I was like, I know that word, but I don't know what it means. A satrap is a governor. So like Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar was the king representing a pagan king, kingdom of darkness. And then he had satraps that were over regions. So the Lord was showing me, he's like, okay, Frank, here's another level of how the kingdom of darkness operates. Let me, let me show you what in Daniel, I got a whole study on this. I might have to do it another week. But in the book of Daniel, I want to show you something. It says that Nebuchadnezzar got into a position where he had recognized Daniel was an excellent spirit. And he was letting Daniel worship the Lord, even though he wasn't coming to the Lord. He recognized Daniel was different. And so first, I just want you to be uh, encouraged that even in situations where you know you're surrounded by darkness, God, if you if he prayed three yes. times a day, if you are determined to just seek the Lord, he will allow you to enter into these places like yeast and let you operate within the system and allow the system to change. But watch this. The satraps didn't like that. So they came to the king and said, hey, you need to you need to build this idol and, and make people bow down. And if they don't bow down, they're thinking about Daniel. If they don't bow down, kill them. So that's how the kingdom of darkness works. It's, it's one of those things like the enemy wants to come at your worship. He wants to come at your relationship with God. He's going to try to kill you because you've got power he's afraid of. The satraps didn't like Daniel because they were afraid of him. They knew that he, because he had been set over all. Listen, receive this word. Daniel had been set over all the satraps. You have authority just like that. The prince of the power of the air, the devil, his time's not up yet. But... We still have authority over all. Do you hear me? Watch this, though. So he did his little, he, he did his little um, idol thing, and, they, they made, they, and then they brought out the music. I need you to get this word. They brought out the music, and when they started playing the music, that's when everybody was supposed to bow. Media. You've got gates, eyes, nose, mouth, touch, right? Gates into your heart. What you watch, what you listen to, what you eat. Come on, somebody. I fight that Wendy's demon. I was going to take Chick-fil-A, but I thought the Lord might be upset if I said that one. Uh, what else? We got, we got social media. Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Those gates to your heart are what the enemy comes at. So when the music started playing, the media that was devoted to the kingdom of darkness, everyone was supposed to bow down. So, so here, here I need you to understand. Guard your gates. Listen to things. Watch things. Eat things that are dedicated to God. This is next level Christendom. This is the church that makes dem demons tremble. It make, when you consecrate yourself and say, I'm guarding my eyes, I'm guarding my ears, I'm guarding my mouth, I'm guarding my nose, I'm, I'm all of it. Because those gates influence my soul, which belongs to Christ. So they did all that and everyone bowed, but Daniel didn't bow. Daniel did not bow. And it's the same for you. Those principalities over our regions and nations in the world... They have been dispatched by Satan to oversee certain regions. Now, we don't go at those principalities by ourselves. That requires prayer and fasting. But listen, I want you to hear this. For your own personal intuition and information and revelation, you've got to pray and ask the Lord to give you another level of commitment to guarding your gates so that media of all types doesn't steal your soul. Even for a moment. Like, I'm not saying... I'm not saying you guys are literally bound by media. Some of us might be. But my point is that the influence will only steal more. Remember that leech, it won't stop. I used to think, oh, yeah, I can listen to Dr. Dre. I can listen to Tupac. Man, when I came to Christ, when I came to Christ and surrendered my life to Christ, the, the Lord Jesus that day, Chas will tell you, he said, take that CD. I had a CD case. I had two CD cases with hundreds of CDs. He said, take it to the dumpster. 
Because I was like, oh, you know, I'll go give it to the record store. Where the, he said, don't you. He said, put it in the dumpster. And he began to deal with my insight and my mind. Let your light shine, y'all. Let your light shine. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, no. He said, I'm not done. I got to talk about what Daniel ended up doing. Watch this. <laughs> so Daniel, you know, bowed not to this idol. And the Lord protected him. Matter of fact, that's when they threw Daniel in the lion's den, right? And after Daniel got set free from the lion's den, because the Lord protected him in battle, only thing Daniel did was pray. And the Bible says an angel was with him Jesus. in the lion's den. An angel! Angelic covering comes with obedience to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But watch what happens. After Daniel got out of there, the pagan king had to acknowledge who the real God was. Come on now. Just like the devil does. Do you understand the devil knows that he's 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 done he's done for? He has to acknowledge who Jesus is. I'm gonna read this real quick. Canada geese, by the way. Canada geese. <laughs> oh. Come on, somebody. No, listen. They fly in Chevron formation. Oh, God. All right, so listen to this. I'm done. This is what, after after Daniel got out of Lions Den, after he basically uh, made a show of the principalities and powers, it says that the pagan king said, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God. And steadfast forever in his kingdom that which shall me shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even to the end. It says that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, including the devil himself. If we are just so committed to breaking through these glass walls that aren't even meant to keep us back, get free of these vines, we're gonna start seeing cities. Communities, nations, regions shift toward the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we got to start at home, right? Amen. And then when we unite together, we're going to put 10,000 to flight. We're going to put 2 million to flight. We're going to put 7 million to flight. We're going to see demons running, and even the highest levels of the yeah. kingdom of darkness are going to have to proclaim God is the living God. Believe this word, receive, say I receive this word. Receive. Praise the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm thankful. I honor you. I praise you. I, I pray that from this day forward, God, we'll just seek you in prayer like we have it before, that we won't just ask you things, that actually we will ask for insight. We'll ask for reconnaissance. <laughs> we'll ask for exposure of the kingdom of darkness so that we can run against the Goliaths of our land. And it'll only take one smooth stone Come on, Jesus. to lay it out. In Jesus' name, we proclaim victory. Say victory. victory. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Awesome. 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 Do you receive it? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh.